Just want to remind you of the size of the aluminum industry in this country. You've got three big players in smelting, Alcoa, Alouette, and Rio Tinto. There are nine smelters, nearly all of them, in Quebec. Canada is the fifth biggest global producer, but the second biggest global exporter. But 83% of the primary aluminum from this country goes to the United States. So it's a substantial industry. Now, we've seen higher copper and aluminum prices this morning, paradoxically, after relatively weak manufacturing data from the states ease concerns about rising interest rates. Meanwhile, though, the aluminum industry is complaining that Russian imports into North America have continued under depressing prices. Let's get more from Jean Simard, CEO of the Aluminium Association of Canada. They still go with that uh, British spelling. It's great to see you, Jean. Great to see you too. Just touch on that theme. It is interesting, isn't it? Washington and Canada have not cut off Russian aluminum imports. No, in fact, uh, what has been done by both countries is to uh, take away the most favored nation status uh, on uh, Russian imports uh, from all types of products. Uh, but uh, as you know, aluminium is like water. It looks for this path of least resistance mm -hmm. to get the highest price. So what we see right now is that <clears throat> Russian metal is being sold at a discounted price uh, wherever the market is a taker. But the numbers are going down uh, from the, uh, the last figures we've seen most recently in September. Uh, <clears throat> we feel that the, there is less and less... Uh, attraction in the market for Russian metal. Uh, so it has to uh, find its way uh, through other regions of the world, but and possibly could re-enter uh, our market in a reprocess shape. Would you like to see governments cut off? Well, I guess the Canadian producers would love to see Russian aluminum cut off. Well, <clears throat> I think it's more of a matter of uh, geopolitics than a matter of trade, per se, at this point in time, because the physical market has self-sanctioned itself. People don't want to touch the Russian metal mm -hmm. anymore. So it's very difficult for, uh, <coughs> apart from contracts that are pre-established, that unless the metal is sanctioned, the market cannot do away with. It's very hard to uh, um, get rid of this uh, contractual arrangement. But when you have, a, when you have a, 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 uh, uh, a chance or another option, the market will go for the next option. Tell us what the demand story for aluminum is broadly. You are seeing some signs of weakness? Yes, uh, well, there's a recession in Europe, and the recession seems to be catching up in North America. So demand is down. Uh, we see it in the automotive sector. Uh, the orders are being delayed. <laughs> the market is working on existing stocks as much as it can. They're delaying uh, orders because they can feel uh, the uh, consumer sentiment as we call it, is down. People are hesitating. They know that the winter is coming up. The cost of energy is going up uh, in, in uh, Europe, in the US. So it's a, it's a, it's a global slowdown, uh, <clears throat> which is also the case in China, which is the largest consuming market in the world. Uh, we know that in China, the real estate has gone down, so it's not pulling its weight anymore. So demand growth is, is lower than expectations, and uh, the market, we can feel that the market is moving very, very slowly. Actually, you just reminded me, in Europe, have they had to shut down smelters because of the high cost of yeah. energy? Yeah, Europe uh, had to uh, cut back uh, 1 million tons of capacity, which is about one-third of Canada's capacity. Whoa. And we expect another 500,000 tons to be curtailed in the coming months because energy costs have gone s through the roof. Uh, just to give you an example, about two weeks ago, <coughs> the cost of energy for large smelting operations in Europe had gone up. 12-fold within three weeks. So you can't, you can't keep up with, uh, with costs like these. And then, actually, just remind me, we know Alcoa, Rio Tinto are global players. Who owns Alouette, that big player in Canada? <clears throat> Alouette is, uh, is like a, a, a huge uh, multinational 
pool of countries. Uh, you have uh, you have Canada. To, well, you have Quebec, uh, who's a, a shareholder. You have uh, Marubini from Japan. You have Amag from Austria, uh, and you have Hydro Aluminium from uh, Norway, uh, who are the, <coughs> the the players plus Rio Tinto that has a share in it. So it's a very multinational uh, pool of companies. It's what we call a tolling plant, which means that people uh, <clears throat> are responsible for their, uh, uh, the stuff that they bring in, mm -hmm. uh, the raw materials that they bring in, and they take away the equivalent of what they own in terms of metal and, and just place it on the market. And just, sorry, just to return very quickly to Russia, do you think there will be a relentless, in reality, de facto ban on Russian metal? Will it gradually get squeezed out of the global market? <clears throat> well, it's interesting because as the physical market rejects the metal, it becomes less and less fungible, so which means that if you want to do a, 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 a trade agreement uh, where, whereas you buy Russian metal, you need to use it as collateral uh, with the banks. The banks uh, are less and less takers for this. So as this happens, then the, mar the, the metal has to find other markets. Yeah. Uh, but they, they're exporting 3.2 million tons of metal. It's very hard to put all that metal all of a sudden somewhere else in the world. So the options are for countries to ban it, or for the LME to delist the metal, which is a process that is starting to be the matter for discussions in London right now at the LME.